So today is a big day for our 670cc Predator-powered 1969 Renault 10. You see, today we're going to trade this stack of paperwork for a license plate. Well, maybe not a Michigan plate, and maybe not something that says 212cc, but you get the idea. So the Renault was loaded onto a tow dolly that was attached to my brother Duke's minivan, and off we went on a convoluted adventure across two counties here in Kansas. So far so good. The 1800 pound Renault pulls good behind a minivan, and it was looking like this was going to be an easy trip. Well, that's when we encountered our first mini disaster. You see, I forgot to take the Renault out of gear, and thankfully we only managed to destroy the CVT belt. Meh, I have another one and these are easy to replace. So we cleaned up our little mess and hit the highway. This time the Renault was in neutral. <laughs> anyway, technically this is the fastest the car's gone in 37 years, and according to the speedometer we're going 55 miles per hour. So initially our plan was to go somewhere over here. However, that proved to be very frustrating due to a communication error. So the new plan was to go over here in this direction and back on the road we went. Now the interesting thing is, we were given the wrong address. However, my brother Duke knows how to drive one of these things and he's fairly good with a map and somehow he sorted it out. And to make a long story short, they took a look at the Renault, they took a look at my money and they gave me a license plate. And that's exactly what I wanted. Now, the 670cc engine bolted to the back of this little Renault was not an issue whatsoever. You see, this car is so old, nobody really gives a crap, at least here in Kansas. Of course, there are states here in the United States that have Orwellian-type rules on such things, but thankfully, sometimes freedom is only a state line away. Okay, so we're only a few minutes into this video, but that's not how time works in the real world. This snapshot was taken at 7 p.m. Friday evening, and this video has to be uploaded by Saturday afternoon. Yup, this convoluted adventure took several days to complete. So today, we're going to just take this Renault on its first drive and see if it was worth the effort. So now it's Saturday morning and of course the lighting isn't great for shooting video, but I only have a few hours to edit this entire video and upload it to YouTube. And we're off. In case you're wondering, the Renault does have seat belts and we may need them today. You never know. Since this is the first time filming in this car, the audio might not be any good and it may be picking up a lot more noise, but the car is actually very quiet. So far, the transmission is working perfectly, and the minor disaster we had previously with the shredded dry belt doesn't seem to have done any damage. So initially, we'll sort of stay close to the workshop, you know, in case something happens. On this Renault, the turn signals are on this side of the steering column. It's as if Renault made no effort whatsoever to homogenize this car for the American market. Nowadays, a new car will get recalled at the drop of a hat, but when this car was built, you got what you paid for, which ain't much. So far, so good. Now, keep in mind the throttle is connected to the governor on this engine, and the throttle response is a little bit vague. Not a big deal. We'll, of course, disable the governor eventually, but today we want to find out how the 670 Predator engine performs completely stock. Now, unfortunately, the digital speedometer is hard to read, but the car is doing fairly good as far as speed goes. Now, this GPS speedometer is right out of the box, and I haven't confirmed its accuracy yet, but it seems to match the speedometer on the Renault, so that's encouraging. Yep, I definitely can get a speeding ticket in this car, so I need to keep an eye on the speed. I think this is the first time I've ever had this problem on a new build. So it's Saturday morning in small town USA, and we do have quite a bit of traffic. So far this car does well in town, and given the speed limits here, the transmission could more or less be left in second gear, 
and the torque converter would have no problem getting the car up to speed. Of course, just for fun, I'm going through all the gears. Well, I reckon this car has passed its first test and it seems somewhat reliable. Let's head out of town and give it the beans and see how fast it'll go. My personal guess is it'll go 55 miles per hour. However, some folks are saying it'll go 179 miles per hour or faster if dropped out of an airplane. Now the simple math says the car will go 70 miles per hour at 4150 RPM, but I have no idea what the RPM of the governor is set to and typically these engines will max out at 3600 RPM. You know, this car looks weird and that's a good thing. I think most folks who see it will understand it's a slow car and just pass me rather than tailgate. Now out here in rural Kansas, folks are used to passing tractors and other farm equipment, so that's good. Anyway, the car is picking up speed and I apologize if you folks can't see the speedometer. In the future episodes, I'll make sure it's clearly visible. So far, the car handles okay. It's certainly comfortable and seems to float over the road. Aside from a few rattles, it's also fairly quiet. And it looks like 67 miles per hour is all it's got today. That's a lot faster than I guessed. And like I said before, I haven't confirmed the accuracy or calibration of the GPS speedometer, but it does match the Renault speedometer, so that's good, I guess. So far, this little engine seems to be doing a great job at getting the car up to speed, and it has no problem holding 60 miles per hour. Just for giggles, let's see how long it takes to get to 55 miles per hour. Well, 48 and a half seconds to get to 55 miles per hour. We can certainly improve on that, and that's going to be the fun part. Now, I'm sure a lot of folks want to know the fuel economy, but I'm going to need a lot more time to set up for that test. So in the next video, we'll find out for sure. Actually, in the next video, we'll do a full performance review, but today we're just having some fun. Anyway, as far as fuel economy goes, my best guess is the car should get around 40-ish if we keep the speed close to 55 miles per hour. Alright, for the record, I'm going to say 42 miles per gallon is my guess. Anyone care to put their guess in the comments? Now, I know the fuel economy folks take this stuff seriously, so if you're going to guess, keep in mind we'll be driving with the windows open because it's summer here in Kansas and it's not unusual for it to be at over 100 degrees during the day.
Well, I would say the car did pretty good for its first road test. It certainly went a lot faster than I thought it would, which is great. I think we need to look into a few minor rattles and unusual noises, but nothing sounded too serious. Now, keep in mind, this engine still has a very restrictive exhaust system and a whole bunch of other things that are easily improved. The 0 to 55 in 48 and a half seconds, well, that's disappointing, but at least the car will go 55 and faster. Let's take a look inside the fuel tank. Yeah, it dropped a little bit, but not much. I reckon this car may do a bit better than my first estimate, and that'll be interesting. Overall, not a bad road test, all things considered. If you want to see more, please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and go ahead and leave a comment if you want to guess the fuel economy. Even though we didn't build this car for fuel economy, it's possible it may actually do pretty good. I reckon if you're seeing this video, well, somehow I managed to get this edited and uploaded in time, and speaking about time, until next time.